Dear students, in this video, I am going to show you a short demo on how to determine the molecular mass and degree of polymerization of a water soluble polymer by measuring the absolute viscosities of a polymer solutions of various concentrations. Before getting started, let us see what are the apparatus that are required for performing this experiment. We need a beaker with distilled water and we need a polymer solutions of various concentrations and you can see here the polymers of various concentrations are being arranged in an order starting from lower concentration to higher concentration. We need a viscometer and then a stopwatch for measuring the time of flow of solvent as well as the polymer solutions inside the viscometer. Let us get started with the experiment and I will give you a stepwise procedure how to proceed with the experiment. So, the first step here is to determine the efflux time for the solvent. The solvent which we have taken here is distilled water and the polymer is dissolved in distilled water. So, the first step is to determine the efflux time for water and how to proceed with this. You take the viscometer, place it inside the beaker. and suck the solvent inside the viscometer. Now, you place your index finger on the top of the viscometer and carefully place the viscometer in the stand. Most importantly, you have to ensure that there are no bubbles sticking on to the sides of the viscometer as well as the bulk of the solutions inside the viscometer. Now you have to slowly release your index finger and the solvent will start flowing through this viscometer from this point. When it comes to this particular mark, you have to start your stopwatch and when it reaches this mark, you have to stop your stopwatch. The following clip will give you a better understanding of this process and how to determine the efflux time T1.
the T1 which we obtained here is 1 minute 12 seconds and 25 milliseconds which is nothing but 72 seconds 25 milliseconds. So you can see the tabular column here where you have to write the flex time T1 here which is nothing but 72.25. Repeat it in the same way to get the flex time T2 and we got 1 minute 12 seconds and 78 milliseconds and this has to be noted down in the tabular column. So once the flex time is determined for the solvent, you have to repeat the experiment for the polymer solutions. So you when, when you are doing for polymer solution, you have to start with the lower concentration first and then you have to move on for the higher concentration. Here we repeated for polymer solution of lower concentration. You can see there is a small increase in the flex time than the solvent. And this is mainly because of the polymer that is dissolved in water. Subsequently, you have to repeat this experiment for polymer solutions of different concentration in ascending order that is from lower concentration to higher concentration. So once the flex time measurement for the different polymer solutions of various concentrations is performed, we will be able to calculate the relative viscosity, specific viscosity and the reduced viscosity from the tabular column. And by plotting the reduced viscosity against the concentration of polymer solutions, we will be able to calculate the intrinsic viscosity and by substituting this intrinsic viscosity in the mock equation, we will be able to determine the molecular mass of the polymer.